Welcome to another After Action Report for Trail Challenge. If you are part of Green Team or Red Team, I kindly request you to leave as this video is locked and that is your verbal warning to do so. If you are new to Trail Challenge, it is an ongoing event where teams try to take control of an entire map with the risk-like rules, but where the combat takes place on the actual maps by creations built by the teams. Each video will be mostly self-contained, however, it is recommended to go and watch the others. This week, not a lot happened, and that's exactly the problem. So, first, green attacked red, and green won, after one and a half hours. The problem is that, frankly, the time it takes to do a single battle is getting utterly ridiculous. So, a lot of pretty big changes happened. Then, Red tried to attack Blue. And to remind you, Blue currently has only one territory left which has troops on it. So if we, so if we lose right now, then like, we're done, done. Like, we're out of the game. And the only reason we didn't lose is because I built something that can somehow survive long enough to stall out the game so long that everyone just gives up. And then Blue didn't even have a chance to attack this time because everything was just taking so long. And you know what? We ruled it a stalemate. Blue is going to attack Red. Red failed to attack Blue. Stalemate. Yada, yada, yada. There's really not much to say. Like, nothing at all. It was just multiple hours straight of two large dogfighters circling each other. And that's really it. Also, because blue and green has an ally system thing together, because we were both running low on teammates that time, I volunteered to go with green, with Exa for defending green, and, sorry, attacking uh, with green against red, and Exa helped to defend blue territory. I wasn't there for a lot of the blue fight, actually. I got out pretty early. If I remember, it was because I ran into a cliff multiple times. And so because of all of these things that have been going on, that battles have been taking too long, and that everything is turning into an aircraft, massive aircraft 1v1, some rules adjustments happened. First of all, there is no longer any respawning. This should cut down the amount of time it takes. It should also clear up some weird rule gray zones. Generally, make things faster without changing it too much. Except for the fact that a single mistake can now end your entire chances of winning. Which is what respawning was initially meant to help reduce. And second of all, previously ground craft could hold one power core worth of weapons for every 20 complexity they have. It has now dropped to one power core of weaponry for every 10 complexity they have. This pretty much, these two changes pretty much change a whole bunch of the defense math that happened in the earlier episodes. But the biggest takeaways and the shortest way that I can put them is that now risk is a lot bigger of a factor. Where before you could take a hit, lose a craft, use that loss of aircraft to then learn what type of weapons the enemy has and other capabilities that the enemy has. Because you could always just respawn, so then the next engagement you're more guaranteed to win. That's no longer an option. If you're dead, you're dead. And because respawning got taken out, single large crafts aren't any better than multiple smaller crafts. I went over why they were better before, because due to the respawning mechanics scaling with the amount of people in a single creation, the more people you have in a singular higher complexity creation, effectively, the more complexity can be respawned. Now that all that's gone, everything is a lot more equal. It's just as good to have a single large creation 
as it is to have multiple smaller creations. And really, the only thing that that ground buff does is makes it really, really easy for ground craft to shred anything. Aircraft, when they're dogfighting, it would still be a relatively slow-paced fight with very high risk, but ultimately, very slow pace of combat. Because if you take a hit, it's okay, you can live. You're an aircraft, you might lose a wing, but typically at this point we're past even using wings, we're using nonsensical gyro nightmares. So you could take a couple hits as an aircraft against other aircraft. The problem is now with ground on ground combat, it's pretty much all or nothing. Like, there is no way to do this without immediately getting vaporized. Because the first person to get a solid strike from the sheer amount of weapons can melt through practically any armor. I still think that aircraft will still be a pretty big factor and most people will still stick to aircraft because that's what people know and are used to and are comfortable with and what people like to use. But I am expecting to see more ground craft later, which also means that we should now start preparing for how to counter ground craft as well, as well as how to not get shot down by a literal wall of lasers. Yeah, those two things cover most of the changes, and that's pretty much all the big stuff that happened this time. I'm going to be putting my fighter jet, the one that I used in the description, I guess, very little territory changed hands other than Green winning that one battle and being able to take a red territory on Airborne. But past that, the status quo remains. Not much has been changing.